Then, I saw him. Radwood was there, a few feet away from that crate. From back there, I couldn't hear what they were saying, but the tension seemed as tight as a bowstring. From Mama's agitated hand gestures, I realized that I was the topic of discussion. Radwood, for his part, seemed calm, almost indifferent. Was it possible that my interference had passed so... unnoticed? What are you doing here, Stallone? Shh! Can't you see I'm trying to listen? They had thrown me inside a cold, dark cargo hold. Oh, that blow was immense. But at least I was still alive. Eugene didn't have the guts to kill me. Not yet, at least. He had also emptied my pockets. If they hadn't destroyed it, the tracker analysis bracelet would bring back up here sooner or later. But would I still be alive by then? I had to escape on my own. The springs of that cot were about to give out. Literally. No exaggeration. It could collapse at any moment. The end of the bed was damaged, and a spring stuck out. The winch seemed to be working. I could operate it with those commands. Normally, portholes don't have a locking mechanism, yet that one was an opening. And more than just closed, it seemed jammed. Maybe the problem was with the hinge. I was sure the damage was in there, but I couldn't get a grip on it. The winch was being powered with that cable. They were very well sealed, and I didn't have time to try opening them. Not to mention that inside, I'd have probably just found rotten fish and rum bottles. Attached to one of those crates was an inviting piece of adhesive tape, though. The tent was worn and ripped in many places. Behind it was just a shadowy area. I found an old CD player. Old-fashioned, but still functioning. Huh, an original pony, by the way. Trying to open it, I broke the little reception antenna. It was completely jammed. That hatch could become my escape route, but it was secured to the floor with a lock. A solid lock kept the huge hatch tightly secured. Although I tried with all my might, I couldn't break the lock with my bare hands. Years of spy movies suddenly revealed themselves as nothing but shattered illusions. All I did was break the tip of the antenna. And that's why the porthole wasn't opening. The spring that regulated its hinge movement was rotten. The new spring perfectly fit the housing. You ugly rat! You again! I must have climbed the side of the ship looking for something to eat. But wait a second. That means M is down there. I could see him right below me, on his dinghy. Calling out loud would have alerted Radwed's men too. Maybe there was a more cunning and discreet way to attract Dem's attention. A reflector pointed towards the high seas, probably to spot potential incoming boats. That wire was linked to the reflector. Hmm. If only they hadn't deprived me of that beautiful extending clothes stick.
Maybe with the hook, I would be able to make something happen on the exterior of the ship. There was nothing left to do but pull the hook hard. I heard the clinking of chains coming from outside. Em had climbed like a monkey up the side of the ship. I can almost smell your eau de sewer now. I knew it was you doing that thing with the reflector. How did you move it from a distance? Are you an illusionist? In a way, I connected the hook of a winch to the... If you reveal the trick, it's no fun anymore. You're the world's worst illusionist. You're not the first to tell me I talk too much. Did you see my spubby up there by any chance? See? A little demon jumped all over me. Oh no! I can't leave this place without my spubby. I can't get out of this place, period. Give me a hand. I'm thinking about your lousy rat. What should I do? Don't you have something you could help me with? I don't know, like a pick lock, a file, sawed off shotgun? Or my former pony remote control. Very useful for matters like this. Got it, I got it. I'll help you recover that filthy creature. Look how that little critter came out of its lair. It must have an incredible sense of smell. I started to consider that the tiny thing might be helpful in creating an escape plan from that cargo hold. After all, rodents are well known to gnaw everything, aren't they? Even what? Damn cheese eater! I really need to lure him into the open somehow. The classic domestic problem. How to capture a little pest that can crawl anywhere and run away at the speed of light. Simple answer, lay the trap. One of the last Pony CD player models. I remember one of its selling points was the ability to be remote controlled. The uselessness of that function contributed to the failure of the product, but it could help me right at the moment. The player had no intention of opening manually. Curiously, the two devices were the same brand. I wondered if there was a way to open the CD player by using the remote control. I would need help. Where'd you learn to climb so well, kid? Have you ever tried climbing a filthy and slime-filled sewer tube? By comparison, a chain is like taking an escalator. It's my understanding that you know a lot about technology. More than you, obviously, given the cell phone you carry around. I just found this old-fashioned CD player and realized it's the same brand as my TV. My hope is that I can use the remote control to make the CD player work from a distance. But you don't know how to set it. I don't even know what set it means precisely. If your remote control is universal, it could work. Do exactly what I tell you. Hold down the function and power buttons together for a few seconds. If you hear a beep, it means it worked. Hey, it really worked. You never cease to surprise me, you naughty rascal. Try not to be seen by anyone, kid. The bulb was very hot. I burned my hand, even with the gloves. A technological rat trap was coming to life in my ingenious hands. I had the trap I needed. That was the best spot for the plan I had in mind. Force the rat to dig its way through the wood. I waited a few seconds, but that rotten rat did not show up. I probably scared him. Gotcha! Little guy, you're gonna be my ticket out of here. The little rat was evidently scared, upset, and desperately looking for a way out. 
just like me. If I could just make a dig. The lamp was emitting enough heat to cause the rat to dig down. I just needed to power the bulb now. I was close enough to power the bulb, but how could I plug it in? Maybe it would have been better to take some precautions before attempting such a move. The heat of the bulb spread quickly inside the trap. At the beginning, the rat ran around in circles, panicking. Then I realized it could only escape in one way, by digging. Now I just have to enlarge the hole. The winch might have been useful to enlarge that hole. Ready for some healthy destruction? No hatch, massive door, or prison can stop. Lazarus Bundy! Hey, Em. I don't know how you did it, but Spubby is here. Yeah, yeah, I, I can barely contain my joy. Now go back to your dinghy and keep the engines ready. We're about to depart from this hellish ship. Thank goodness. I don't like this place. Huh, you're scared, huh? Not at all. It's just that it's cold out here, and I want to go back home. And now, we're out of here. I found myself in a cabin full of documents, papers, and a huge map hanging on the wall. On the table, I glimpsed a box containing all my belongings. I intended to retrieve them, and then run away like the wind. But the phone started to vibrate as soon as I picked it up. It must have been Alice trying to make contact to figure out what happened to me. Alice? It's not exactly the best time to talk. I'm about to jump overboard. I assume you were able to infiltrate the Sitlalique. Remarkable. You. It's a real pleasure to finally be able to chat. Even if not face to face as I had hoped. You son of a... I prefer you call me Doctor. And why so much spite towards me? I'm just trying to give your career a little boost. By kidnapping a girl? I'd rather stay sitting on my hands. I wouldn't be so sure about that. But we'll talk about that another time. I'm dying to know how your investigation's going. So please, tell me. Have you already found it? Found it? Huh, <laughs> of course. I've found everything. I'm afraid not. And indeed, your situation is not the best. That ship will be your grave if you don't decipher the riddle that lies within as soon as possible. In the main cabin, to be precise. You'll recognize it by the huge map hanging on the wall. You bastard. This whole thing is just a game to you. A sadistic game with the life of an innocent at stake. The life of two innocents, as you have surely already discovered. At this point, I'm curious, Lazarus. What do you think about the kidnapping of Catherine Molsberg? Catherine is carrying Radwed's baby, and that's what he wants. But I don't understand simulating a kidnapping if the girl was consenting. That's exactly the point. She wasn't. The girl was mentally reconditioned. Her entire sentimental story with Radwed was created and well orchestrated. Even the baby's conception. But why? What's so special about that baby to make someone engineer such a plot? Now you're pretending to know too much, Lazarus. But the clock is ticking. I suggest you spend your time trying to find what's hidden on the Sitlalique. One last hint. You have the solution to everything in your pocket. Even if you still don't get it. The hourglass is emptying, Lazarus. See you soon. I hated admitting it. But the doctor had managed to replace my healthy instinct for survival with an irrational need to turn that cabin upside down. Until that moment, I hadn't learned anything concrete, and the situation was starting to burn at me. 
I needed a victory, even the smallest one, to find the strength to proceed, but I couldn't achieve it by myself. Hello? <clears throat> uh, Miss Sharp, uh, I'm Inspector Burton. I was about to drink my fifth afternoon cognac when I decided to promote you as an intern for life. Congratulations! Lars? Lars, is that you? Hey, how'd you recognize me? Has anybody informed you that phones now show the number of an incoming call? Mine doesn't. Your phone dates back to 95, Lars. Wait a minute. You... you're not on the Sitlalikwe, are you? I'm calling you directly from the Oceanic Flows. Are you in danger? Do you need me to send back up? Well, I've been locked inside a cold, dark cargo hold for a while. And it's only thanks to the supersonic speed of my brain that I managed to get out. Or combining random objects or breaking things like you usually do. After that, I received an interesting phone call from the doctor. The doctor? You mean the man you've been hunting for days? Precisely. It seems he wants to be called that. We've established that he likes theatrics then. Are you hurt? Only my feelings. This guy doesn't want to kill me, Ellis. He's having too much fun with me. He creeps me out. Anyway, you better leave that ship. And soon. There's a situation I need to tie up first, but I need your assistance. Then it's time to use the Bluetooth device I gave you. Involve me in all your steps. Roger, Roger. Do you receive me? Loud and clear. I can't take my mind off the last words of the doctor. You have the solution in your pocket. What if it was another one of his subtle clues? Let's get to work. The device measuring the... the pressure and... and the altitude and... and, uh... You live in Miami and you don't know the first thing about boats? If you can believe it, I don't even know how to swim. There's a safe in the room. From the look of it, I'd say it's going to be a tough nut to crack. Can you read its model? Let's see. Secure Master Core 2.5. Bad news. I am browsing a blog of professional safe crackers, and it seems nobody has yet found a way to open that specific model. Or, at least, a way that does not involve using an abundance of dynamite or liquid hydrogen. Sorry, is a blog of professional safe crackers really a thing? You'd be surprised what circulates on the deep web. Anyway, it seems clear the only way to open this safe is to find the right combination. I don't think the doctor would play so dirty that he wouldn't provide me with all the necessary information to face his challenge. The combination must be somewhere in here. I'm sure that trying random combinations wouldn't do any good. Hanging on the wall is a large map. Describe it to me meticulously. It is represented as a map of the entire world. But actually, it is missing entire continents, including North America. Seems antique. If it's missing the more recently discovered continents, it could be traced back to the time of the ancient Romans. Are there any decorations? No, nothing specific. This doesn't add up. Normally, maps like that always display a symbol, the wind rose. It should be there. What if it was removed for some reason? I think we should follow this lead since we have nothing better. Look for anything that might refer to the Windrose. Try to find something that relates to the Windrose. Anything at all. Hmm, let's see. A few incomprehensible projects, an incomprehensible sort of logbook, a completely incomprehensible stack of papers. Then we have playing cards, a few chips, nuts, and a drink. Hmm, somebody went buckwild in here. Come on, Lars. Don't waste time. Wait a minute. Here it is. A magnet with the windrows engraved on it. This is confirmation that we're on the right track. Okay, I have the windrows. Now what do I do? Let me check. Maybe on the deep web there's also a nice blog for code breakers of old Roman maps where windrows is missing. Okay, I found a website that seems reliable. If the map is a reference to the ancient Romans, there's only one spot where that magnet should be placed. Rome, obviously. Wrong. Apparently the Romans were convinced that the origin of the winds wasn't in Rome, but an unspecified point in the Ionian Sea. Copy that. It's make or break time. Wait a second, Alice. When the doctor suggested I have the solution in my pocket, Maybe it it wasn't just an expression. The chest note I found along with Catherine and Radwed's photo. 
It must mean something, and, and maybe it's even linked to the riddle hidden in this room. It seems plausible. Describe the note to me. There are some chess diagrams, a few colored in red and others in green. Hmm. The combination of color and chess could be a movement suggestion. You know how it works, right? Chess? It always seemed to me a pastime for manic obsessives. You don't know how wrong you are. Ask if you need instructions. On one side of the note, there's also a windrose. That could be a reference to the map in the cabin, couldn't it? At this point, I'd be surprised if it were otherwise. Okay, let's get to work. A knight. In chess, a knight moves in an L pattern. So two squares vertical, followed by one horizontal, or vice versa. A rook. The rook can move in as many free squares as you want, but only in horizontal or vertical lines. There's a funny piece, with its head cut in two. The bishop. You can move it in any diagonal direction, as many open squares as you want. Metallic clank? That, my dear, was the sweet sound of success. The safe is open. That means its mechanism was just a smoke screen. Very ingenious. But why did the doctor give me suggestions on how to solve the riddle of the Sit Lalique? Maybe he was feeding the challenge by giving you some hints. <sighs> I hope next time he sends a few pistachios instead. I love pistachios. Alice, are your steps in the hallway. Do something, hurry! Suck on that, Doctor. What's happening? Are you okay? I gained some precious seconds, but I've got to move. The safe contained mostly paperwork, bearer bonds, property records, and notarial deeds. But something else got my attention. It was a small obsidian item that partially reflected my image. Huh. All that fuss just to hide a little mirror. And yet, I immediately understood that this wasn't an ordinary mirror. I could sense its power running through my veins. It was like... Like holding something alive. Lars! Lars! Pull yourself together, Lars! You said you have to move, and instead you've been gopping there for two minutes now. Two minutes? Damn. This little thing hypnotized me. I'm hanging up. We'll catch up when I'm back. Do get in touch. Go, go. After my incursion aboard the Seat Lalique, I knew I should expect another private visit. This time, without any possibility of a rain check. I wasn't wrong. The same individual that approached me a few hours earlier had returned, and this time he wouldn't go away with just some simple chatter. Besides, at that point, I was tired of talking as well. You have nowhere to go! Are you sure about that? 